Hello, City Ho family. Everybody good? It's good to see you this weekend. I want to welcome everyone online and those at the campuses. Thank you for being part of our weekend. And I have to say, I was able to sneak around and look at some of you guys yesterday doing the uh, boxing of the food. And you guys just were just radically crazy. Um, I mean, I've never seen so much energy in older people. I've seen it in children, but in older people like you. And, I, you know, I figured it out. It's the cafeteria hats. That's it. So I thought we'd pass those out one service and just see what happens. Yeah. Besides that, you look so attractive with those on. Yeah. They kept trying to hand me one, and it's like, mm -mm, I'm just watching. But it's great to see you this weekend. I want to continue in the series, Tune In. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I'll be in John 15 and in Genesis 18. I want to spend a lot of time in Genesis 18, so if you want to go there. Uh, we're talking about hearing God. How many of you want to hear God? Yep. And uh, when you talk about hearing God, most people want to know how. How do I hear God? This weekend, I want to deal with why. Why we need to hear God. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it, this, but why does God want to speak to us? I mean, billions of people, he wants to speak to us. Title of this message is, I'm a friend. So here's what's happened. In one week, you went from me calling you a sheep to now you're a friend. You feel better? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I'm a friend. Come on, do it. I'm a friend. Now tell the person back, well, you smell better now than you did last week. I mean... Last week, it smelled like a sheep, but anyway. So let me just give you a, a, a little illustration of levels of friendship, okay? So there are two friends, and uh, one guy is in the hospital, had surgery. He's been there three days, and he calls his friend and says, I'm bored, I'm lonely, would you, you mind getting some books and something and bring to me to read? So the friend gathers the books, goes to the hospital, goes to the front desk, and says, will you give these to my friend, so-and-so, he's in room, such-and-such, and, such. and he leaves thinking, I have fulfilled the request of my friend. Well, that's one level of friendship. But let's look at the same story at another level of friendship. You have two friends. One goes in the hospital, and his friend is there while he's checking in, and he's actually in the room when the doctor comes in and explains the procedure and, and all the details. And then the friend comes back after surgery when he's in a room, he has books, and he's spending time and talking, and, and then he's in the hospital several days, so every morning before he goes to work, he drops by, and then every afternoon he goes back by to see his friend, and uh, which is the deeper level of friendship? The, the second one, right? Yeah. Does God want the level of friendship that when he asks us to do something, we do it, but we really don't even think about it until he asks. Or had God, would he rather have the level of friendship where we kind of think about it because we're close to him and we know him and we just do it without him even asking? And you see, that relationship is built through communicating. And, and here's the reason I'm saying this. If we learn to hear God for the wrong motive, and, and most of the time, our motive is to hear him, but you see, that's not necessarily his motive for us. Most of the time, our motive is to receive information from him and instruction. His motive is to get to know us, get to know us intimately. He wants us to get to know him, he wants to get to know us, and that is the difference in the level of the relationship. So let's talk about friendship. In John 15, there's this amazing verse, and Jesus is speaking, and he says in verse 15, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master's doing, but I've called you friends. For all things I've learned, I heard from my father, I have made known to you. I've made known to you. In the Greek, that means I've spoken to you. Everything the father has spoken to me, I've spoken to you. That same verse in the New Living Translation, which is a thought-by-thought -thought translation, 
It, it, it goes like this. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in a slave. And that word confide there means he's not intimate. The, the slave doesn't know what the master's doing. He's just, he's just working and serving. Now you're my friend since I've told you everything the father told me. He continues talking, and in that conversation, we read later as Jesus talking, he says, there are other things that I want to say to you, but I'm not going to say them right now, but the, the Holy Spirit will say them to you. It doesn't mean God stopped talking. It just means that while I'm on the earth, I, I, I've told you everything I'm supposed to tell you. So there's a level of friendship Jesus establishes, and, and, and he says, I, I've come that you might have a relationship with the Father, and, and part of that relationship is communication. And I want you to know that, that part of the relationship with God is communication. So I want to share with you three things about being friends of God. The first one's going to sound a little weird and a little odd, but just hang with me a minute. I think you'll get it. Number one, God does not speak to robots. He didn't create us as robots. He created us as persons. We, we possess a soul, and the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotion. And, and God wants to communicate to us personally because we're persons. See, we, we communicate two ways on the earth. We, we communicate to machines mechanically. We communicate to persons personally. You say, well, I, I don't talk to my car, my lawnmower. Well, yeah, you, you do mechanically communicate to your car. You communicate to your car what you want it to do. If you want to go faster, you press the accelerator, right? If you want to turn into Dunkin' Donuts, you turn the steering wheel, right? Anybody in for some Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah. Okay, and, and if you want to slow down, you press the brake. So you communicate with the car mechanically. And I know there are some cars that talk to you now and all that good stuff, but they seem so impersonal. You know, you know, not, there's no intimacy. When you communicate you know, with your smartphone, and your computer, you're depressing keys, and it's, you're communicating mechanically. We're not machines. God did not create robots. He created children, and he communicates personally to his children. Now, I want to show you this conversation because to me, this, this is one of, the, it's one of the longest conversations between God and a man that we have record of in the Bible. And to me, it's, it's kind of funny in one sense, okay? So I'll, I'll look at it a little differently, but I hope you'll see it, what I'm talking about. So it's Genesis 18, 17, and, 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 it's, and it starts off, and the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Shall I not talk to him, tell him what I'm doing? Since Abraham shall surely become great and a mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, verse 19, for I have known him. I've spoken to him. We've talked. In order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they may keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he had spoken to him. Now, before we go any further, let me explain that when he's saying this, there's a group of men. It's not just Abraham. There's a group of men. So watch what the men do. Verse 20, and the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, because their sin is very grave, I will go down and see whether they've done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. If not, I, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood, uh, st still stood before the Lord. He, he didn't move. He stood right there. Abraham came near. Now, before I go on, here's what I want you to see. We talked a little bit last week about a couple methods of, methods of knowing how to know God. If you want to hear God, you've got to stop, stand still, be quiet, listen, and draw near. And, and, and most of us never stop till you drop in the bed asleep and you're worn out, right? We, we have a hard time just being still. And secondly, we have to push in and draw near. I'll talk about that in the, in the rest of the series, how you do that. So then Abraham starts talking to God. The guys have left. He's standing there. He starts talking to God, verse 23. And Abraham came near and said to God, would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? I mean, it's almost like he's kind of got the finger in his face saying, would you? Now, see, he knows God well enough to know this isn't in God's character. Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare, spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? And then, then watch this. He goes on in verse 25. Far be it from you to do such a thing. Man, that's a pretty bold conversation. Far be it from you to do such a thing. Can you imagine saying that to God? 
to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? In verse 26, the Lord answers, okay, okay. If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I who am but dust and ashes. I, listen, I'm just, I'm a nobody. I, I'm, I'm nobody, just nothing. But I'm, but I'm coming to you and, you know, I, I, I'm taking it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Verse 28, suppose there were five less than 50 righteous. Would you destroy all of the city for lack of five? And God said, if I find there are 45, I will not destroy it. Then verse 29, and he spoke to him yet again and said, suppose there should be 40 found there. And he said, he didn't say that, but I think he did. I will not do it for the sake of 40. And I think Abraham detected that sigh. And that in verse 30, he said, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak. Suppose 30 should be found there. And so he said, I will not do it if there are 30 found there. So he said, and he said, indeed now, Lord, I've taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found there. And so he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. And then Abraham said again, I mean, he's tenacious. Let not the Lord be angry, but I will speak once more. Suppose 10 should be there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. Verse 33. So the Lord went his way as soon as he finished speaking, Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Now, here's what I think happened. This is just my, my idea. I, I think it's like this. I, I, the Lord went away. The Lord went back, and, and Abraham went to his place. And, and I think the Lord walked in to the presence of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and he said, did y'all hear that? <laughs> yeah, he's Southern. Did y'all hear that? Wasn't that the neatest thing? He knew where he was going. He started at 50, but he knew he was going to get down to 10. And, and did you guys hear that? Far be it from you, peace. That is incredible. And, and I think God the Father said to the Son and the Holy Spirit, you know, I like that guy. He's a little redneck, you know, from South Alabama or Georgia or wherever. But, but I, I like that guy. That, that, was a, that was a fun conversation to have with that guy. I, I think he and I are going to be good friends. Now, I, I, I can't prove that. That's just my thought about it, that it would be. But you see, God doesn't want robots. He wants to talk to us. And sometimes in our minds, we get this idea, just like one of the prophets thought, Lord, I'm the only one left. Yeah, right. Do you know everybody in the world? Well, I do, and you're not the only one left. And he was right. These conversations with God, you know, here, here are people, they have these conversations because they're people. They're not machines. He created us as people, not just, just to put input data in you so you'll do the right thing that you're supposed to do. That's not what he's looking for. You're going to do that because you have a heart and a relationship for him because you love him. But, but he wants to talk to you as a person. So, so number one, God doesn't speak to robots. Number two, God speaks to people. All through the Bible, we have, we have God talking to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. We have him talking to Moses from a bush. We have, he's talking to Noah and Abraham and Deborah and Ruth. And, and we have him talking to people all through the Bible in the New Testament, and Peter and Paul and James and John and Luke. And, and, and then you have a guy named Cornelius. You heard of him? Well, God's talking to him, and he's not even a believer. But he hears the voice of God. So why would we think now that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that God would speak less than what we've read about in the Old Testament. God is still speaking today, and we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, so His Spirit is speaking to our spirit. And, and, and let me tell you, He's going to continue to speak. It, it, he's going to speak more and more and more. He's not going to diminish. He's going to continue. So we started in John 15, but I want to look at John 16, verse 12. Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, the Holy Spirit, he will speak. He'll speak. And he will tell you things to come. How many of you would love to have a heads up on things to come? In the job, in the kids, in the health, in the fight, all of this, yes. So who's going to speak to us? The Holy Spirit, to our spirit. Who's going to tell you things to come? The Holy Spirit. God did not stop speaking 2,000 years ago. God is telling you, hey, you're my friends, and I want you to know that you're my friends, and I have things to tell you. And listen, you're not servants anymore. 
Because if you were servants, you, you, you're not going to know the things that I'm going to tell you. You're my friend, so I have things I'm going to tell you. And this is a season that I am going to speak to you on the earth. And this is a season where the earth is going to come to an end. But what, until it does, I'm going to keep talking to you and speaking to you. I'm not going to put you there and leave you as an orphan and, 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 and just hope you make it. No, I'm sending someone that will be with you all your life and speak to your life. And he's going to tell you things to come. So do you see that? Two people saw that. I think we have a misunderstanding that needs to be clarified. So let me tell you how I see it. I think, we think, the way God spoke in the Bible to people is different than anyway, the way he speaks now. I don't see it that way. We think in the Bible God spoke audibly or strong and, and that it was different in, in, in the way they heard God than in the way we hear God in our spirits today. I, I don't believe that. Hebrews 11 is what we call the hall of faith. And it says, by faith, that Abraham went out. By faith, Moses. And it lists all these people, by faith, by faith, by faith. If it was struck a strong, audible voice from heaven, and I'm not saying God can't speak audibly, so don't hear that, but if it was this strong, audible voice, then, then was it by faith? Did you need faith that he spoke so strong and the hair on the neck stood up that you had to have faith? No, no, I, I think you could rewrite it and say Hebrews 11 should be by fear Abraham went because the voice of God shattered. It was so strong. I mean, you know, God just says, listen to me. And you're like, oh, you know, but you, you know. No, it was by faith. And we know how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I think they all heard by an impression. Now, God can speak audibly, yes. And, and Elijah gives us, he gives us the best description of the voice of the Lord because he said it was a small, still voice. I know God can thunder from heaven, but I think he can thunder from heaven in your heart. I, I think he can thunder here. But what if they heard God with spiritual ears instead of natural ears? J just like we hear God, we talked about it last week, we hear God with spiritual ears. We really can't disprove that by the word. That's how we hear it. But what about Moses? He's talking to a burning bush. How many of you think that's a little strange? And we're going to go down to the bush, and it's going to burn, you're going to talk to God. Well, the, the bush isn't being consumed, and, 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 and God's talking to him, and I think he sensed what was God was saying to him in his spirit. And then God said, take off your shoes, watch. If this had been some dynamic voice coming out of this bush, and God said, take off your shoes, and, and then right after that, after he said that, then, then he says, who are you? And he says, oh, I, I'm the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then later in the conversation, you know, he's talking about going to Pharaoh and telling him to let my people go. Moses says, now, what was your name again? Now, I think if it's this large, loud, audible voice, I, I think he would have remembered the name, but it's small still. And remember, Moses really didn't know God well yet because he was raised in Pharaoh's house. He said, I am the God of now. Gideon. Gideon, I mean, God shows up to him and speaks to his heart, and Gideon asks for a fleece. Why do he ask for a fleece? Well, Judges 6, 17 tells us, he said, now, if now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it's you who talk with me. If this big, booming, audio, audio voice is speaking, why would he doubt? And I think every person who's ever heard the voice of God had to move in faith. And for you to hear the voice of God, I think you have to move in faith. And then some say, well, God doesn't speak anymore. Because now we have the scriptures. Well, they had the scriptures. You look in the Old Testament, they're pulling out the script. You go to the New Testament, they're pulling out the scriptures. It is written, it's written. And God spoke in the Old Testament, He spoke in the New Testament. So, one, God doesn't speak to robots. Two, God speaks to people. Number three, God speaks to friends. Exodus 33 and 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. If you have a close friend, that, that's the person that you can talk, right? Bottom line. Uh, you, you, you just cut to the chase. You're going to talk woman to woman, man to man. You're just going to talk. You're going to get to the bottom line. Well, that, that's what he's saying. James 2.23, James and the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So you have to understand, God wants to be your friend. Otherwise, you will only try to communicate with God when you're in trouble or looking for a decision to be made. And God wants to help you when you're in trouble. He wants to help you with decisions, but he wants to speak to you as a man speaks to his friend. He wants to be your friend. He wants to talk to you every day. If you have a best friend, you're probably in communication just about every day. 
And, 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 you know, God wanted to be your friend before you wanted to be his friend. Before you came to the Lord and, and became a believer, God is talking to you like he talked to Cornelius. He's talking to you. The Holy Spirit's talking to you and, and ooing you and calling you and pulling you to come to God. He's talking to you. And, then, and, and, and I want to show you some verses of how Jesus did this. And only Jesus can do it because he's Jesus. But, but he, I want you to see this because it's amazing how Jesus treated people that are not treating him right. And, and this first one I'm going to read is a, is a prophetic messianic scripture. And that means this. It's a scripture in the Old Testament that's speaking prophetically of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And, and there are many of them. And there's so many of them uh, describing this crucifixion. You can almost get it blow by blow through, through these scriptures. But listen to Zechariah 13:6, And one will say to him, what are, those, what, what are these wounds between your arms? And he will answer, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. My friends did this to me. They're, they're the ones who beat me with a whip, and they're the ones who, that my friends did it. Then Matthew 26, 48, now his betrayer, Judas, had given them a sign saying, whomever I kiss, he's the one seizing. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, greetings, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And Jesus called to him, friend, why have you come? And then they come and laid hands on Jesus, took him away. I mean, here's the man who's going to betray him. He's going to his death, and Jesus still calls him a friend. Jesus said in John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friend. We are friends of God. And if you think of your closest friend, God's a better one. He wants to be that close. We have close friends and we can recognize their voice. We are talking about how to hear the voice of God. I'm telling you, become a friend of God and when you do, you'll recognize his voice. Because listen, the people who know and hear God's voice the best are the people who know God the best. They didn't get some special calling. They don't, they don't have special status. They know God best. The more you know God, the more you hear God. I mean, you remember, well, some of you do. You remember phones before caller ID? Some of the older people do? Yeah. Uh, you, you answered it, but you're waiting what are you waiting for for that person to speak so you can identify? If it's friend or family, you do it you just because you've talked to them so much. Wouldn't it be great if we developed a relationship with God that when, he, when we're about to make a wrong turn or a wrong decision or we need help or something, he simply called our name. And even in the chaos and the busyness and doing all the things that we do, that we hear that. Why? Because we've spent time with him and we know his voice. And sometimes, yes, we need to be still, but he understands. We're busy. But even in that, when we hear the voice, because we know him, and we keep knowing him more and more, that he speaks to us, we hear that voice, and then we turn and we listen, and we ask him what he wants us to do. You remember the child Samuel? Remember the child Samuel who heard the Lord speak? And the priest, Eli, is away from God, and he's not hearing it, and, and, and twice he speaks, and the, the little Samuel would go and wake the, the priest up and say, sir. And then finally he said, Who, I'm, I'm not talking to you. Who's talking to you? Well, I don't know. I'm hearing this. And, and, Sam, and, and Eli said, well, listen, the next time you hear it, just say, uh, speak, Lord, your servant's listening. So childlike faith, he heard. But, but the, also, the scripture also says in that, in that story in 1 Samuel, it says, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no widespread revelation. Nobody really knew what was coming ahead. And the word was rare. The word rare in our understanding is a connotation of limited supply or something that's, that's limited. But that's not the true meaning. That's the secondary meaning. The primary meaning of the Hebrew word for rare is valuable and precious. So the people, they didn't hear the word very often because they were, people had turned from God. But, they, but those who knew God, when they heard a word, it was valuable and precious. It was valued because they're hearing the word of God. My question is, do you value hearing God's voice? Is this just another sermon series? And, and, and I know this is elementary. I know this is so simple and it's so basic. But it is that simple to hear God's voice. Now, you probably have never done this, but I have, so I'll confess. Once I was giving God my to-do list, because I'm a Christian, and that's called prayer. Right? I mean, right? That's what, yeah. So I was giving God my list of things he needed to do while I had my things I needed to do that day. And, and just like that, he just kind of broke into my spirit and said, could we just talk? Could we just talk? 
I know you're concerned about all this and that, but let me remind you of a few scriptures. Before they ask, I will answer. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Jerry, I'm, I'm going to take care of your list, but could we just talk? Now listen, I, I've been a believer since seven, eight years old. My fondest memories of relationship with God over my entire lifetime are not the things he's done for me. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm not talking about blessings. The most important thing he's, is what he said to me. I can remember the things that he spoke to my spirit. And they're all so short and so simple. But they're so profound. It's like the child Samuel. It's so, it's so easy. It's so simple. But we're so busy. And then we get caught up. If we're going to him for the wrong motive, I just need this done, need this done. He wants a conversation. He wants to be your friend. I referred to this book last week, Hearing God by Dallas Willard. He said this, and it's, it's, I didn't quote him verbatim, but it's real close. He said, and I'll put it on the screen because it's a play on words. I treasure his presence presence more than his presence I treasure his presence just being with him it's more important than what he can do for me God wants to be your friend how many of you value friendship in the natural yeah everybody has to have a friend but what about a friend in the spiritual he's going to take care of the list he's going to help you get through that can we just stop and talk? And the more you do it, the more you get to know him. And the more you know him, the more you hear him. And then when you start hearing him and he starts speaking little things to you like, can we just talk? I can't tell you how many times. And, 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 and even, even God has even spoken through other people to say something to me. And to them, it didn't mean anything. And it would just be like three or four words in a sentence, and they would come up and say, I'm supposed to tell you this, and I don't know why. And it was from God, and it just, and it just melted me. Now, I've said this before, and you've probably heard me say it, but I, if, I'm, if I'm focused trying to hear God intentionally, I have a hard time doing that. But if, if I'm in the yard doing yard work, that, that's, that's where I hear God the most. And, and, and I've had people say, man, you've been in the yard a lot this week. <laughs> and then I've had a few smart alecks that have said, man, you need to get in the yard, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, a time, it's just a process of time. It's not that I have some special formula. I'm just telling you, he wants to be your friend. He wants you to recognize his voice. He has a lot to tell you that you don't know yet. We want to pray for you. Maybe you're going through a difficult time and you would say, I, I, I know I'm a friend of God, but we, we're, we're not real close right now. I kind of walked away from the conversation. You ever got mad at your best friend and didn't talk for a little bit? I got a little pouty or whatever, yeah. Maybe we do that with God. I walked away from that relationship. Or maybe, maybe you're, you're here and you need to give your life to God. Or maybe you need to give your life back to God. We want to minister to you. So if you're going through a difficulty right now in any area of your life, in just a moment, we'll have leaders in front in every campus. And maybe this is new for you, the way, the way we dismiss, but a pastor will come and I don't want you to be embarrassed to come for prayer. And you say, well, I'm not even a member of City Hope. It doesn't matter. You come because we, we want to pray for you. And as he dismisses and people are exiting, if the Holy Spirit has been talking to you, because you see, we need to hear the voice. Maybe you need somebody to pray with you to help get that started. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Lord, I ask you, to give us sensitivity to your voice. Our world is full of chaos and noise. 
Help us to quiet and be still and help us to realize you want to be our best friend and to speak to us in your still voice. Holy Spirit, I pray you'll draw every person that has any prayer need to come by your voice. In Jesus' name, and the church said, 